we're all ready, Neotel, I invite you to introduce your team and begin. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, the Neotel delegation will be led by MD and CEO, Mr. Sunil Joshi. Um, thank you, Tracy. Um, councillors, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to present um, our submission and our thoughts on, on a subject uh, which is uh, quite dear to us, as well as we believe it is important uh, for the nation itself on LLU. Um, as, as, as a starting point, we do believe that LLU has a lot of merit um, in, in the contribution it will make uh, to the economy, especially around innovation um, bringing in more competition stroke, lower prices, but also enabling SMEs to grow. And we'll talk a little bit about that during our, our presentation. Um, but also create an opportunity for increased investment, but also um, jobs uh, within, within the, the region that we operate in. But before I proceed, uh, please allow me to, to introduce my team. Um, uh, to my extreme right, we have Peter Zimri, who is from the regulatory team. Uh, to, Tabello, um, who is also from the regulatory team, uh, the next to Tabello is uh, Tracy Cohen, who is the Chief Corporate Services Officer. Uh, then Angus Hay, who many would know, uh, leads our strategic business development. And to my left, Ryan Hawthorne, uh, who is also from the regulatory team supporting um, our engagement and, and our submissions. If you could move to the next slide, please. Um, from, from Neotel, from the time it was its inception, as it was earlier known as the SNO, or the Second Network Operator. Um, and and we, we, we thank uh, the Ministry, the Government, as well as ICASA for the support that Neotel has got uh, from the time of its inception to where we stand today. Um, our journey has been um, quite eventful one, and it, we've come a long way in a very short period of time. Um, and we've invested quite uh, significantly in, in South Africa to be now having um, an asset base of about 6,700 kilometers of fiber and over 400 base stations installed, and thereby ability to serve consumers as well as businesses in South Africa with leading edge network and managed services solutions that will enable them to grow within South Africa as well as enable them to grow in geographies beyond South Africa, be SADAC or the African continent, or even mature and emerging markets. In addition to our infrastructure, there are many other infrastructures that are available, which include almost five and a half million lines, um, which are copper. And they certainly are available um, as an option to connect to uh, many households even today. Um, but what we see uh, the purpose of Neotel was at the time of its inception even today is to certainly bring competition into South Africa and enable through competition more affordable communications and services, but also bring innovation into South Africa with leading edge technologies being deployed, not necessarily at the bleeding edge, but certainly at the leading edge to enable South Africa to collaborate within, its, within, within the region in itself, but also collaborate with other geographies and certainly lends well to South Africa now being uh, amongst the, the elite uh, league of the BRICS economies where South Africa's capability as an emerging market has certainly presented an opportunity. An opportunity that will require uh, South Africa to, to look at productivity but also to look at uh, infrastructure and innovation as some of the key measures for its success in, in the local markets but also in the global markets. Um, as Neotel has invested in the past few years, uh, we've, we've created jobs in South Africa and, and all of what Neotel is and close to a thousand people are incremental jobs that were created by virtue of the investment as well as the services that we have brought into South Africa. Um, we would have loved to bring more services in sooner and, and that's, that's one of the, uh, the, the reasons why we are now pursuing um, and requesting and supporting ICASA to, to explore LLU such that it is enabled um, there is infrastructure that's out there that enables us to have unfettered access at economics that would make it reasonable for us to provide services to the larger co consumer base or the businesses. Um, and certainly with that being enabled, it will help businesses to compete. Compete in the global market as well as uh, enable businesses to, to leverage technology and not necessarily be, be reliant on, on old mechanisms of, of way businesses were conducted, but certainly get productivity gains due to technology being applied. Um, with that, um, I would now like to hand over to Ryan, who will take, take you through 
the further thought process and the next level of granularity around why we believe LLU is important and what benefits that could accrue to, to the economy and also how it could create increased competition but a, ability to provide ubiquitous services on infrastructure that's there. Ryan? Thanks. We, we believe that, um, <clears throat> that LLU will give rise to economic growth mainly through the enablement of SMEs in South Africa. I mean, as Councillor Curry mentioned yesterday, there's research that shows that um, in developing countries, increased broadband penetration leads to a 1.38% increase in GDP growth. Now, I mean, just to give you a rough feeling for the sorts of numbers we're talking about, South Africa's GDP is about 2,900 billion rand. So, you know, 1% uh, of, uh, of our GDP added is, is about 29 billion rand. Um, what, what we'd really like to draw the authorities' attention to is the fact that f around half of, of Telcom's DSL subscribers are small and medium enterprises. And small, medium and micro enterprises account for 40% of our GDP and 60% of employment. That's according to the National Planning Commission Diagnostic Report. GDP has also, I mean, uh, sorry, LLU has also been a long time coming. So we've had a ministerial policy decision to implement LLU in 2007. Um, the, our current minister has reaffirmed this policy position, and uh, which, which brings us to, to today. Our, we really think there's six benefits that will be brought about through LLU. The first is around innovation. And what this OVAM research shows is that South Africa's highest widely available broadband speed is exceedingly low by developing country standards. So this is so. By, so the top tier of developing countries are offering speeds of 20 to 30 megabits per second in their highest tier. We're, we're currently sitting at four megabits per second. We think that LLU will allow new entrants like Neotel to um, bring new technologies much more quickly to the market. The next, the next um, area that LLU will bring about is significantly lower prices. So you heard MWeb's submission that uh, prices for IP Connect are substantially above the prices of international connectivity, for example. The, the, we've calculated that the, the, the proportion of internet bandwidth that IP Connect accounts for is up to 80%. Now, this is before you've had any connection to any other network in South Africa or anywhere else in the world. A huge proportion of the cost of internet bandwidth is IP Connect. We, Neotel thinks that we can bring this price down significantly. Again, to reiterate what I was uh, saying earlier about SMEs, SMEs, uh, re about three quarters of connected SMEs um, <clears throat> rely on DSL for broadband connectivity. So while it might be the case that some consumers are able to use wireless and other alternatives for local loop unbundling, SMEs cannot. And, um, and, and this, is, this is a key feature that, that we'd like the authority to take into account in its, in its decision. This is based on Worldwide Works research of, uh, you know, using a survey of 2,500 SME, SMEs in, in 2010. The next, the next key feature that we'd like to draw the authority's attention to is the fact that internet video is going to account for an enormous proportion of... IP internet protocol traffic in 2015. Internet and internet video, as you know, consumes enormous amounts of bandwidth. This cannot be delivered by wireless. This, according to Cisco, m much of this internet video will be delivered um, over fixed services. LLU will enable competitors like Neotel to bring innovative service offerings to the market to enable greater penetration among households and uh, greater ability to use internet video. LLU will also create jobs and investment. What we've put up here is really just the direct jobs that Neotel would, would, uh, would have to create in as it builds out to telecoms exchanges. 
And what we've done here is just calculated the distance of, of the information that we have, limited as it is, of, of telecoms exchanges to our nearest fiber and built a dual route to telecoms exchanges. And we believe it will, LLU will create hundreds of thousands of job days and, and hundreds of millions of rands uh, in investments in telecommunications infrastructure. Again, this is just Neotel. Then there's, then there's other operators, and then there are all the jobs that are, that are created downstream through SME development, which I just want to reiterate, SMEs account for 60% of employment in South Africa. There's a, there's, uh, Telcom makes a lot of the fact that LLU is likely to harm it. Oh, we, we really don't think that that's likely to be the case. The, the authority's current process is not to set price controls on telecom's local loops. The authority is not seeking here to, to, to set a price relating to cost. Telcom currently provides a, a monthly a, a copper line using a, a monthly line rental and a wholesale DSL line for around 230 rand a month. That's what they do. If Telcom <clears throat> charged this for a wholesale, wholesale local loop, the, that price would compare, that price would be the highest in the world, frankly. Of uh, there, there are around 29 countries that have implemented local loop unbundling. Uh, incidentally, three of them, uh, more than, I mean, more than three, I mean, there are a whole lot of Eastern European countries, but three countries outside of Eastern Europe uh, are developing and have impl implemented LLU. The bottom line is Telcom's price for a wholesale unbundled, lo unbundled local loop would be the highest of all of those, and we we strongly feel that this will m much more than cover their costs, and LLU will not harm Telcom. We just want to make, sometimes we, we feel that the, 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 the point that, the basic point about increased supply as a consequence of competition is, is not made enough in the context of LLU. I mean, w what really happens with uh, an increase in, in innovation? Well, there's an increase in supply. In economic terms, the supply curve shifts out. And what this means is lower prices, yes, it does, and, and lower prices indeed mean a transfer of what economists call producer surplus to consumers. But what it also results in is a net welfare gain due to the increase in quantity supplied. Uh, so a, a lot of a lot of the in a lot of the debate it gets lost that you know it, telecom sort of says well we're going to lose some jobs and we and we're going to lose some money out of all of this well the the point is is that um, a lot of that lost money is going to consumers and in addition to that there's going to be a substantial increase in quantity supplied now in order to support that increase in quantity you will need to employ people or at the very least maintain jobs. Uh, that, it's, a, it's a simple fact. In order to produce more, you're going to need to employ people, whether that's within telecom or whether that's, with, that's uh, by uh, rivals to telecom. Just, there are a whole lot of uh, arguments that have been made uh, that relate to why um, the, unbundling the copper local loop will be flawed. The first is LLU is outdated. Well, I mean, LLU is currently in place in 29 countries, and that's after regular regulatory reviews. Another argument is that, well, all local loops should be opened up. The reality is, is that the, the 2007 um, DOC LLU report and the, and the ministerial decision really relates to copper. And frankly, trying to tackle wireless and, and fiber at this stage is, uh, will delay that, uh, that, that, uh, that policy decision. <clears throat> There's another argument that uh, telecom is more vulnerable to local loop and bundling than other incumbents globally. Well, we've shown that telecom's local loop whole wholesale pricing, the authority is not seeking to regulate that. And everybody here recognizes that reasonably incurred costs will be paid for by new entrants uh, like, uh, like Neotel. And, and so, you know, we, we really don't think that, that LLU will harm telecom. Again, another argument is that LLU is complex and costly to implement. Well, again, you know, the costs of LLU being found to be outweighed by the benefits in 29 countries, including developing countries. Another argument is that developing countries are somehow different to developed countries. Well, the reality is, is that the, the same World Bank report uh, quoted that I quoted earlier shows that, in fact, developing countries benefit more from greater broadband penetration than, um, than developed countries do. Developed countries, the research shows 
that uh, developed countries show a 1.21% increase in GDP as a result of a 10% increase in broadband penetration, whereas developed countries see a 1.38% increase. Uh, there's also been a lot of debate about uh, how access seekers should fund LLU and contribute to an access line deficit fund. Again, everybody recognizes that telecoms reasonably incurred costs will be covered. Um, as far as an access line deficit fund goes, you know, it's, we really just want to draw the authorities' attention to the fact that we don't want to conflate LLU with universal service policy. Clearly, there are much cheaper ways of achieving universal service outcomes than using copper. LLU will not support rural broadband. Well, the reality is, is that LLU will support millions of SMMEs. Okay? Again, SMMEs account for 40% of GDP, 60% of, of, of employment. There's also uh, a little bit has been made of, uh, of the fact that the reliance on the two, 2007 ministerial policy decision is flawed. The reality is that the, uh, the authority is obliged to consider but not to adhere to or implement um, the ministerial policy directions and decisions. Policy directions are not a legal prerequisite for either conducting a Section 4B inquiry, which is what we're doing today, or for unbundling the local loop. LLU is technically and financially unfeasible. Well, the reality is it's been implemented in 29 countries. There has not been enough discourse and, uh, and an impact assessment um, is, is another issue that's raised. And again, the fact is that uh, the DOC, the, the Department of Communications 2007 Local Loop Unbundling Report adequately provides the research and a basis for regulatory intervention here. Uh, it's been coming for a very long time and, and the industry is, is, should, is, is, should, should be well prepared for it. Finally, we just want to point out the fact that while these cross-country comparisons are, are very difficult to do ultimately, the, the fact is that broadband penetration has been greatly benefited um, through a large, in a large number of countries through LLU. Um, and, and so could, and we, we really just want this, the benefits of greater broadband penetration through local loop unbundling to be felt in, in South Africa as well. And that's it. Thanks very much. Um, if I may, uh, in closing, um, th what we are trying to present um, to, to ICASA, the councillors, and our colleagues from the industry is the, is the view that Neotel has around LLU and, and the benefits that far outweigh any other option. And there are economic benefits uh, that will accrue. There are benefits in employment, innovation, as well as the improved quality and services with an increased amount of products and therefore driving enhanced productivity uh, of businesses in South Africa, but also enabling South Africans to, to leverage services that are world class. Um, and therefore leveraging newer emerging trends such as internet video, which, which is enabling businesses and consumers to collaborate across uh, cross-border. And, and also the accrued benefit being the further drive in, in improving the broadband prices and therefore making it more affordable. Um, we, su we support ACASA in, in this policy discussion and, and this debate, and certainly we believe that it is something that will benefit uh, the economy and certainly will, will accrue its benefits to Neotel as a business, um, but also want to point out that we're not asking for anything for free. Um, the, the, the whole pretext is around there is infrastructure in the shape of copper local loops available that investments have been made. We can contribute to further sweating those assets where those investments have been made because leveraging those assets for providing uh, enhanced services and new age uh, technology solutions will enable us to bring to bear latest technology into South Africa. And there is a benefit from that, but we would ask for uh, unfettered access and therefore economically viable uh, cost constructs that will enable us to leverage this infrastructure. Um, and with that, uh, I would now um, leave it to, to hand over to, to the councillors and, and the chair uh, to point any directions that they have towards Tracy and, and we'll orchestrate the, the hopefully answer the questions that you may have and then to the audience. Thank you. And thank you very much for that presentation. It's so brief, I'm tempted to ask you to do it again. <laughs> I think it went over well. Okay. Um, 
All right, so Neotel has given a number of reasons why ICASA should concentrate on unbundling Telcom's um, copper network as a priority. Uh, we've just heard from ISPA that they think we should be running a number of parallel processes so that all aspects of, of local loop are addressed even if uh, there might be um, time delays in implementation. Um, what, what does Neotel make of, of ISPA's view on this? Uh, Chair, thanks very much. Um, I mean, I, I think that we, in our written submission, and um, Councillor Stuckey, we did do a very abridged presentation because I think that we've given you a fairly detailed written submission. Um, but obviously, if there's any anything coming out of that that you'd like to address, we'd be happy to, ha to t uh, tackle it here as well. Um, I think in our submission, we made it very clear that we think the focus should be on copper. Uh, obviously, some questions will be raised about fiber, will be raised about CDMA, will be raised about wireless, wireless slash mobile. Um, the question uh, remains for us as to how one would unbundle it, but also what the policy priority would be. Um, and 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 then the question of which one you would do first, um, or could you do them all in parallel, even if that was a, an option? Um, I will I will ask Angus and uh, Ryan to address the the fibre and wireless aspects of your question um, with your indulgence. Uh, but our short answer to our question is that the focus should remain on copper because that's where the policy priority needs to be in order to achieve the objectives that the document considered as well as the policy direction. If I could just um, respond on the issue of wireless firstly, which has been included. Um, I think we've, we've made it clear in our submission that um, we certainly support the approach taken by the authority of using the, the facilities leasing guidelines as a basis. Um, and therefore, we, we do not have um, strong views opposed to other kinds of unbundling in principle. However, I think as has been stated by various other players, the focus needs to be on the implementation of uh, copper local loop unbundling because that's uh, firstly the uh, as, as Tracy has said, the, the, the element that um, is guided by the original, um, the original policy direction and because it is something which is well known globally with standard practice. Uh, we share some of the concerns of other players that in the case of wireless, we're not entirely sure what lo uh, wireless local loop unbundling would entail. There may be models, but we're not entirely sure how those models could be implemented. We would support a process to identify those models but it's certainly not for us something that can be done easily and quickly as, uh, the, as copper can be done. Um, we're certainly open to, uh, to the, the discussion, but uh, I think the timing is important. Um, if I may also uh, compliment what Angus had said. As Ryan had pointed out, there are many other countries around the world that have embarked upon or have uh, concluded the local loop unbundling. And so, therefore, there is enough grounds for learning the experiences that many of those have gone through in how much did they choose to unbundle at what venture, because through that, even though they're 29 behind us, there's still a learning curve that, that we must go through as well as we implement what's right for South Africa. And therefore, while the longer-term perspective would be what's right for South Africa, the immediate term and here and now investments that have been made for, for decades has been in the copper local loop where all others that have been spoken are much more recent. And therefore, there's a balance between where should uh, uh, enterprises and businesses and government continue to invest in infrastructure and where is already in invested and how can you leverage it far greater. And most experiences of the other geographies that have embarked on this have focused on the copper local loop because it gives the necessary focus required and it gives the greatest gain as it's much more ubiquitous and, and far more penetrated than some of the other mechanisms are. Um, right, so then taking the, uh, the, the copper network, um, MWeb have come with a view that uh, there should be a number of phases, and the first phase is, is uh, bitstream, um, and that they see sh shared local loop as something that could be introduced way down the line. What, what is Neotel's view of such a, uh, a proposal?
our view is that the, the various uh, options that have been put forward in the, uh, uh, by the authority are, are not uh, choices, they're not alternatives. We, we share ISPA's view that these are simply some of the ways in which local loop unbundling can be done uh, using facilities leasing guidelines. Um, we don't see any benefit in slowing down the implementation of the remaining uh, aspects. In particular, in our submission, we've made it clear that all of the proposals that have been made, uh, including um, all four of the, the models that have been proposed by the authority, should be implemented simultaneously. And uh, we don't share MWeb's concern that uh, there, there would be uh, an, an, an easier path if it was phased. Uh, we believe these should all be done simultaneously and not chosen as alternatives uh, on the part of the provider of uh, local loop. Um, Verticom has argued that uh, Bitstream is a service, not a facility. What What is Neotel's view on this? Um, I, I think uh, I think we yeah we've heard that argument. Um, we would probably agree that it's not a facility, um, and there, there may be some co concerns around whether or not um, it could be regulated by CASA, although there's nothing in law that would prevent Telcom from voluntarily providing Bitstream access to seekers. Uh, but I think we would probably agree with that view. Um, in, the, in the discussion paper, we are, are looking at the possibility of setting up a number of working groups to look at different elements of LLU implementation. And we had thought that within that practice notes could be developed. Um, but there's a, a view that that would not be sufficient and that we should make use of section 44.3M um, which is to do which is to do with an element in the um, prescription of facilities leasing regulations that we should prescribe the manner in which unbundled electronic communications are to be made available. Does it, Neotel have any uh, view on, on this, the distinction between practice notes and uh, supplementary regulations? Well, we've always been a great fan of practice notes, Councillor. Um, we think practice notes are a very good idea. To be honest, it's something that we've submitted in, in various of our submissions, particularly in areas where there's uh, multiple levels of interpretation that can be applied. Um, I don't know if we have a firm view that we would take here um, and we'd maybe want to consider it um, and file a supplementary. Um, in principle, of course, we strongly support working groups. It's another thing that we push for quite strongly in all areas. Um, I'll ask uh, my panel if anybody wants to take a firm view on it, but my preference would be that we make a supplementary. Yeah. Yeah. In your written submission, you take the position that the local loop falls within the definition of electronic communication facility contained in section one of the ECA, notwithstanding the fact that local loop is not expressly enumerated in the list in section one. Why that position? Um, our, our view is that uh, a lo uh, the copper local loop is a wire, which is um, which is set out in section one of the of the ECA and, and therefore it is an electronic communications facility. I mean simplistically, I mean there are other I mean Sabello and the lawyers will have better reasons for that, but literally it says why, I mean <laughs> I mean uh, Chair and, and members of the of the panel, uh, uh, from a legal perspective I think uh, our view is that I mean of relevance is that section forty three eight uh, A lists local loops and subgroups as, as uh, facilities uh, that must be included in the list. And we are of the view that, uh, I mean, these places, these therefore places uh, their status, uh, the status of local loops and subgroups as electronic uh, communication facilities beyond any doubt. So those are our submissions. The reason we are raising this question is that uh, uh, there are some submissions which seem to indicate that we are not supposed to include the local loop into the definition. 
Det er litt komme en sånn der. Chai, jeg tror... Jeg mener, vi vet at LLU er en spesifik form av facilities leasing. Og som sånn, ICASA er oppgivet til å regulere LLU i akkordens med kapitel 8 av ECA. Thank you, Chair. On page 15 of your submission, point 51, you indicate that Telcom is currently willing to provide a copper local loop to other operators for approximately 231 rand per month. Does that mean that full loop unbundling is already practically possible, or is that just a price indication that you've been given? Well, it's both possible, but it's, that's, the price, that's the price indication that's out there in, 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 in Telcom's pricing. Uh, it's not that Telcom's offered it to us for 231 Rand, but, uh, you know, we'd, we'd be happy to talk to them about that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Neotel provided a very strong argument for different term fixed termination rates based on the location of call handover on the principle of providing an incentive for new entrants to invest in infrastructure during the call termination debate. Can the authority realistically expect Neotel to build out to secondary and outlying cities, or is that a f fabrication? If I could just tackle that in terms of uh, where we have um, uh, Neotel facilities currently across the country. Um, I think it's, it's often uh, misunderstood. Uh, we are a national operator. We have a presence in we estimate about 130 um, cities, towns, and, uh, and smaller towns across the country. We, we connect services in those towns. What we are not able to do in many small towns is extend from the center of the town out into the rest of that remaining area. So where we have been able to roll out our own metropolitan fiber, which we have done in the major metro areas, we, we do reach very close to customers. Um, we, we currently average about uh, 400 meters from a customer at the date of order. But in smaller towns, we are hamstrung by the inability to reach beyond typically the center of the town. Uh, we often reach the center of a town uh, via uh, rail or, or power facilities to a railway station, something like that. Uh, and we have access in those towns, absolutely. We can, we can certainly provide you an indication of where we physically have presence, but no local loop. Uh, thank you. And uh, what is your view of the concept of purchasing outright geographic segments of the installed fixed line infrastructure, for example, the entire local exchange in a small town? Um, I guess the question is, uh, to, to answer that will be another question, what's the benefit? Um, and where our approach is that um, the, the local loop unbundling is not purely going to benefit a supplier, uh, a service provider, an operator. It should be available um, as an unfettered uh, infrastructure for all operators and service providers, of which Neotel will certainly benefit, dependent upon the customers that uh, are, are choosing to, to take our service, um, as well as where they're located. So then it enables us to, to leverage infrastructure that's already there and then therefore pay a fair price for that and ensure that that service can be provided. But if I was to say I would like to buy all of it, um, that would, one, probably need a lot of um, investments. But secondly, it will restrict others, but it will also restrict South Africa from benefiting from an infrastructure that's already there and other operators provide different services, some of which we may not choose to provide, and bring it to, to closer to consumers and businesses. Uh, in the presentation, you mentioned that local loop and bundling will not harm Telcom. Now, Telcom currently gets its revenue from retail services. And you're saying by getting revenue from wholesale services, that's not going to, ta going to harm Telcom. Can you justify that? Uh, again, I mean, uh, to the extent that Telcom, Telcom loses some retail customers, um, which they inevitably will do, and those customers are supported efficiently by call center agents, by product managers, and so on. Uh, you know, Neotel and others are going to have to hire exactly the same people to support them. And remember that that quantity increase, that net quantity increase, that's going to result in more people employed 
um, to to offer offer services as more broadband lines are connected. Um, Telcom again. I mean, telecoms wholesale prices. If if they choose to price it at 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 what they currently roughly offer copper for, um, you know, are going to be the highest in the world. It'll more than cover their costs. Yeah. And if I could complement that by. I think where, where we have to start thinking is the differentiation will not be at the infrastructure layer. The differentiation will come at the services layer, which will truly benefit the retail consumers. And that's where competition should be, um, where the infrastructure that's available, if made um, available to all, then how do we differentiate ourselves as operators to improvise on the customer experience, the type of services we deliver, and the breadth of services we can deliver on an infrastructure that happens to be common, and you can leverage other technologies to provide that. Um, certainly the, the, the other argument would also be that if the, the local loop is, is not uh, made available in an unfettered way as it is today, um, it, other investments will have to be made. As other investments are made in the same area, for example, on the same street, then the other question one asks is, one will get 100 and the other will get zero, or the other gets 100 or the other gets zero. In the, in the case that we're presenting, there's still a percentage of 100 that the wholesaler will get, even though the retail service will still be made available at a differentiated level. So will there be a harm to South Africa and the economy? The answer is certainly not. Will there still be benefit? to the existing um, uh, owner of the local loop or the, last, uh, the, the copper local loop? The answer is certainly not. But then it will drive all operators to also enhance customer ex services and customer experience. That, I believe, is the true benefit that will accrue. Thank you. And then the argument that's being posited by many uh, countries for their broadband strategies for next generation rollout is the open access principle to ensure that their next generations get access networks get used as quickly as possible. In other words, get a return on investment, it's particularly capacity utilization, fast. Does this argument equally apply to existing infrastructure? I think just to reiterate our position on the, the fact that lo local loop unbundling is uh, a subset of uh, facilities leasing. Um, certainly we support the principle that facilities leasing, of facilities leasing and that um, the, the principle of sharing of infrastructure. Uh, we have entered into a number of different um, relationships where we share infrastructure. We are a shared infrastructure player in submarine cables. We are a shared infrastructure player in the deployment of national fiber networks. We are a shared infrastructure player in terms of access to towers for wireless. We are a shared infrastructure player in terms of co-location. It's a principle we apply across, um, across the cost base of our business, is sharing. So it would be hypocritical of us to say, no, absolutely we support the, that principle of sharing. Um, the important thing for us is around the prioritization to maximize the rollout of services. Um, here, what we're talking about is, is copper, an existing very substantial copper base, which we believe is right at the top of that list of priorities. Amongst other priorities, we would look at things like local access ducts, access into buildings, uh, sharing of other facilities in metropolitan areas, sharing by councils, for example, who have facilities. So we broadly support the principle of access to those facilities. Uh, and we shouldn't be focusing on uh, you know, specific, uh, specific facilities in the hands of operator A, B, or C. But we do believe that at the top of that list of priorities should be the very substantial local loop that exists. Um, to to complement that one as well, um, there is also a, a framework of uh, investment and, and business and business return that also must be considered, um, where uh, we also want to ensure that there is enough appetite and desire for investing in infrastructure in South Africa, and therefore for whoever chooses to invest for certain returns over a period of time to be made available so the, the investments are recouped. Um, Whereas the investments that we're talking about in, in the local loop, especially copper, have been made decades ago. Um, and certainly the making the, continue to make them available is what we're talking about. But as infrastructure becomes more ubiquitous and you continue to build where there isn't one, but you have to leverage where there is right now, and that's where most of the population lives today. And, and that certainly will add the capability of, of the focus on the local loop, on the copper local loop, to provide those services on what's existing.
Um, when you look at current uh, efforts to release more spectrum in the digital dividend at the moment, do you still subscribe to your stated view that LAU will bring internet video to more people in business, or would that be up to the mobile operators? Sorry, I, I'm sorry about that. I, I, I think I missed the question, but are you, are you saying that can internet video be delivered over wireless? Yes, I'm saying in future if Spectrum is released to mobile players. We'll, we'll, you know, the, the more the better, but the reality is, is that Spectrum is a finite resource, whereas copper can simply deliver far more in terms of capacity than, than radio frequency Spectrum technically and physically is able to or, or will be likely to be able to in the, in the near future. And, and so um, when you're talking about huge volumes of data that need to be, um, that are required for internet video, it's, it's just, it's, it's the fact that wireless can't deliver it in the same way that fixed can. And that's why Cisco is saying that, you know, more than two thirds of, of internet video, I can't, I, there's, you saw that slide there, but more than two thirds of internet video is going to be delivered over fixed. It has been said that uh, the success of LAU will depend on uh, line quality. What is Neotel's view in terms of the kind of parameters you're looking at when it comes to line quality? The copper local loop has been very successfully exploited to date by the deployment of ADSL technology, asynchronous digital subscriber line technology in South Africa. There are many enhancements on that technology. We've not yet seen substantial deployment of VDSL uh, in South Africa, which is uh, a, a faster digital line technology, which is better at coping with the, the quality of lines and the performance and the, and the, the noise levels on lines. So we believe that the, the technology is Technology is always our secret weapon in, in the telecoms market. So technology enables us to make use of facilities, even if those facilities are not perfect, and we're not claiming that necessarily that all local loops are perfect. However, we are looking at uh, a very lo a substantial base of existing copper that can be used much more effectively than it is today. I think even the incumbent operator itself will admit that it is possible to apply newer technologies to get better performance out of those services. With regard to quality of service and the, the overall performance of uh, DSL services in, mar in the market, um, I think it's, uh, it's what, what we perhaps are not doing is comparing the, the quality of service and performance with other technologies. DSL in general is a very high quality, high performance technology relative to many wireless technologies. Um, it, it, it does give the, the ability to, 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 to deliver higher quality of service and particularly to deliver next generation services more effectively than wireless today. Um, and certainly if we, if, if we have, uh, are able to apply those newer technologies like VDSL, uh, quality of service is something that can be deployed. What we would not be able to do, for example, is to have any impact whatsoever on the performance or the quality of service if we were to use uh, bitstream or existing wholesale DSL. In order to enhance the quality of service and performance using technology, we require access to the physical copper. Uh, so one of the mechanisms that gives access to the physical copper. And uh, how would you rate WiMAX as an alternative to copper-based ADSL? I think it's uh, we've really, really dealt with the that WiMAX and uh, and LTE. Um, are both uh, uh, the next generation of wireless technology. They give similar levels of performance. We today have a WiMAX platform that we use for delivering uh, services which are similar in ways to ADSL. But I think the emphasis has been placed on the, on the fact that uh, Spectrum is a finite resource and the amount of contention, the amount of sharing that is required ultimately on Spectrum uh, is going to be the Achilles heel of uh, wireless against, uh, against fixed line. So the ability to deliver a much higher speed, much higher performance, and many more subscribers on a, a wireline infrastructure is what it sets it apart from a wireless infrastructure. My last question. Um, I think opinion has been put forward that um, there might be a tendency to cherry pick if uh, LAU comes on board. Um, how amenable is Neotel to deploying 
in the raw areas should uh, you come on board? Again, I mean, we really, we I just want to reiterate the point that I made earlier, just that we really don't think we should be conflating LLU with universal access policies. There are much, much cheaper ways of achieving universal service outcomes than using copper. And and we really want to, you know, just make it very clear that our, our position is that uh, the two should be kept entirely separate. Ron, we understand. I don't think you answered the question. Um, with, if there is existing copper and leveraging the local loop uh, around the nation, and certainly there would be services today that the incumbent would be providing in those regions as well because they are an operator themselves. What we're saying is that we will certainly look at options depending on business case and where our customers are, are looking at our services and certainly want to deploy, as we have done so so far in, for example, our national long distance build out that we're doing, which is necessary for expansion of our footprint as well as our services. If, if, if I could just add a, a point about business models. Um, much has been made of the fact that uh, for example, and, and I'll use the term advisedly, but the, com the comment about cherry picking. Um, we have rolled out infrastructure to areas, uh, many areas in South Africa. We have m many thousands of kilometers of, of uh, fiber access within the major metropolitan areas. Uh, if you just stop to think for a second, th there's not a lot of incentive for us to use, wire, uh, to use wire, uh, wireline copper access where we have fiber. So in reality, the in, in many cases, if we, if we are looking to deliver services, the places where we have the least local loop today is, in fact, outside of those major metropolitan areas. It's, in fact, in the smaller towns. It's, in fact, the, the very place that we mentioned earlier that where we do not have access to local loop. In Santon, we have plenty of fiber. It's right outside the door. Thank you, Chair. Um, my question relating to uh, in in your chapter, uh, sorry, page four of your slide, of your presentation. Uh, Cisco, in their vis uh, visual network index 2011, they predicted that um, in 2015, 66% of mobile traffic will be video. Is is it sustainable and is it appropriate for South Africa? I'm sure that uh, a large proportion of mobile traffic will be video just by virtue of the fact that most tra IP traffic in the country will be uh, internet video. The reality is is that, uh, is that um, the vast majority of people and the vast majority of internet video IP traffic will be carried over fixed. There is a view that the current um, network design of telecom would not cater for naked ADSL. Is, is that a fair comment? Is that correct or not? Um, I, I think what we'll, uh, we will certainly take the question back and, and respond later. Um, I don't want to comment offhand about uh, Telcom's network. We don't have a great deal of inside knowledge about it. Uh, m much has been said about what you would like to do with access to Telcom's local loop. But I would, I would assume that some of that is conceptual because we don't have a network map about where it is. Are your views conceptual, or is there actually some detailed insight into what the status of Telcom's network actually is? Uh, we, we've done extensive analysis ourselves of um, both the business cases as well as the, uh, the opportunities in rolling out uh, um, using local, uh, local loop unbundling as the basis. Uh, so, yes, do we have information internally uh, in Neotel? Yes, we do. And to add, that's what's in the public domain. 
um, unless it's 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 shared with us otherwise, which we can then make uh, a lot better analysis of, which we would certainly um, love to have. Um, but equally important, that says, um, has there been enough effort gone in and investment of time and effort? Yes, uh, because this is important to Neotel, and we believe it is important to South Africa that there is infrastructure. On that infrastructure, there are services that can be rendered and some innovative solutions that can be provided to a market that's that's been asking for the new services to be brought in at much more affordable uh, price constructs. And that's where our approach is. Is without, if LLU doesn't happen, is South Africa running the risk of becoming a wireless only and therefore a spectrum crunch society? Um, th th there's more than just wireless. Um, Neotel is continuing on its plan to invest in leveraging its capital investment plan within fiber infrastructure in South Africa and will continue to do so, as we have done in the past four years. Um, that will ensure that our footprint continues to grow and we will provide services to where we will have access and therefore connectivity. Um, there is um, a, a view that then says that if LLU does not happen, what will that leave as an opportunity for South Africa to leverage as an economy? I think the examples of the 29 countries itself, one thing we do know, increase in broadband penetration in any geography around the world has benefited directly and, and in terms of growth in GDP and growth in competitiveness and, and bringing in newer services on whether it's education or it's healthcare or others that ride on top of that infrastructure. That is the benefit that South Africa can accrue by virtue of leveraging without um, major uh, changes the infrastructure that's there. Um, if LLU is not available, will the alternate route be existing infrastructure and possibly wireless? The answer is certainly yes. And it will have then some pressures on how best can you provide high-definition video, for example, over a wireless infrastructure versus a fixed. And we do know that high-definition video consumes a fair bit of bandwidth, and that's where the world is leading to. Um, standard definition will be a choice, but then you'll have to think about if we are competing in the global economy and we are creating an environment of entrepreneurship where new business models will get created, the, the thing that we must think about is what kind of infrastructure we can make available that is local as well as enables our businesses and our consumers to engage on a global scale. And that's what will put South Africa on the global map. What, what conditions need to be in place for uh, effective local loop unbundling in, in one of the small towns you mentioned? How easy is it to implement that? I think the, 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 the immediate uh, requirement is that we, that obviously we, we the, um, the guidelines are in place. Um, I don't believe that the guidelines would necessarily be ge geographically specific. So firstly, I think as has been emphasized, we strongly support the approach of having guidelines which would be applicable across all of, for example, um, the incumbent operators' exchanges across the country. Uh, so really the combination of guidelines that, that apply specifically to what would need to be done in those exchanges to deploy uh, physical infrastructure, uh, and uh, together with um, the application of the, of, of the facilities leading guidelines and uh, the ability to co-locate uh, in those facilities. Uh, we've not done an extensive analysis of, 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 the, of the specifics of any you know, particular exchanges, but certainly the general principles that are apply in uh, an urban area and a rural area would be much the same. Um, the way in which typically, uh, typically the incumbents network has been rolled out historically, um, those physical facilities exist, e exchanges exist, and the uh, space exists, the power exists, the, the, uh, the equipment exists to enable us to deploy if there's a suitable set of guidelines upon which to, to base that deployment. Um, so that would be, from our point of view, the conditions would be obviously uh, investment from our side, uh, which in any case we are putting into other network infrastructure today. What if the guidelines specified that uh, small towns and rural areas should receive priority? We, 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 frankly, our, our view is that, we're, that local loop unbundling should be applied across the board, um, but we will take whatever is available. 
I think on a broader construct as well, we have to think about, um, and and I'm very sure that thought process is is on about the 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 value of LLU to to the economy, to the nation, ubiquitous whether it's a, a large town or a small town, and it's about leveraging inf infrastructure that's already there. Um, it is not about creating new infrastructure, but then how do you make that accessible to operators like us or other operators may choose? But again, it's about how ubiquitous can you make broadband penetration and how easy can you make it for consumers to, to leverage um, the broadband services available from various operators. And there comes a balance on where would you see economic prosperity and where would you see the need for um, for growth and penetration of services into other parts of, of South Africa. And, and there is... Uh, necessitating a, a, a thought process or for the debate this is what is the right model because at the end it must but benefit South Africa as a whole just coming back to to this this process um, you also say in your submission that um, we still need to do market studies with regard to pricing uh, are you then saying that the facilities leasing guide uh, regulations are not uh, adequate, uh, say we're looking at small town, local loop unbundling, uh, is the non-discriminatory principle on pricing in the Chapter 8 and the facilities leasing regulations um, adequate or would we still need to do uh, market studies? Look, uh, I mean, I, all, all that we say in our presentation is that if you're seeking to regulate uh, wholesale prices, then you'd need to go through a market review. Um, we and and that's really the, the extent of it. That that's all we have to say about uh, a, about a chapter ten process. So, and I mean, the the way that you're currently approaching it is that you're not seeking to. I mean, you you go you explicitly say in your discussion document that you're not seeking to regulate wholesale prices through this process. So you certainly don't have to go through a chapter 10 process, uh, a market review process to, uh, in order to unbundle the local loop. As a newer rather than new entrant to the market in South Africa, our discussion, the authority's discussion document has mentioned one of the benefits of local loop unbundling would be to outsource customer acquisition costs. Uh, has Nyoto found that the cost of customer acquisition to be extremely high? Does it make sense for a firm to outsource, in effect, the customer acquisition cost exercise? Um, I, I don't think the concept of outsourcing customer acquisition um, would, would probably be a relevant one. We certainly wouldn't want to do that. Um, we were providing a service to a customer and remaining in the line of sight of the customer so the experience is, is well understood and improvements can be brought thereof and continuous enhancements be provided as well. Um, we do not believe outsourcing a customer acquisition is, is the right way. However, we do believe that engaging with customers with channels, multi-channels that would suit the best way that they would like to procure the service is the right way to go. Some customers may choose the internet as a mechanism to, to procure, even services like ours which are enhanced. Some customers may choose a direct um, salesperson to engage or a channel partner with, through whom they have an existing relationship. Our approach has been we will provide the channels that best suit the customer uh, that they're con comfortable and, and there's convenience for them to procure services for. If I can ask that in a, in, a, in a different form, Telcom right now has a wholesale service fixed line and it has a retail service that has to go and find customers. That's an expensive, potentially expensive exercise. Would that not, would, does it make sense or for the authority to consider the idea that outsourcing or sharing out that retail acquisition exercise is an efficient exercise for a large company. I think the, the, the key here is to look at it at a market perspective. Um, you know, I don't think what we're dealing with here is, is the question of the success or failure of an individual company in, in improving the market. And I think that the real benefit lies in the fact that there are multiple players that are able to do that. Um, what we often overlook is the sheer level of innovation both at a, at a business model level, at a, at a customer service level, um, and also at a technology level that, that is innate in the South African market. So 
I don't think it's, a, it's about whether one company should have multiple ways to address its customers, but the fact that there are multiple companies who have different innovative ways of addressing their customers. Um, I can perhaps just give one example of the kind of market which is where, where in the absence of any kind of ability to compete on local loop, um, there's, there's a, a plethora of wireless access uh, Wi-Fi based providers in South Africa. They operate on extremely low cost bases and extremely innovative models for addressing customers. The only reason they're unable to get wholesale access to any local loop is that, frankly, there isn't a local loop that has been made available to them. Um, they also obviously suffer from a lack of spectrum. And th those players, many small players, many small, very local players, many in rural areas, have built out markets with very smart ways of addressing and supporting customers. It's not about one company, it's about the market. I have in front of me a paper entitled Local Loop Unbundling versus Encouraging the Growth of Wireless Local Loops, Lessons for South Africa from Other Countries. Ryan Hawthorne, and this draft is dated the 16th of June 2010. This paper's not been published, I gather, but it was quoted twice yesterday. I'm, I'm so glad someone's finally read my paper. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, look, yeah, it was pretty selectively quoted yesterday, I think. I mean, basically, there are a whole variety of issues that come up with local loop unbundling. What, 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 why local loop unbundling, for, and this is, I point this out in the paper in detail, why it often fails in, in other countries is um, incumbent responses to the regulatory process and, regulator, re, frankly, regu regulators being unable to deal with those responses in many instances. The reason why there is a little bit of hope in our case um, is that, it, you know, as I, again, as I point out in the paper, ICASA isn't seeking uh, through this process to regulate the price, the wholesale price of the local loop. That is by far where all of the issues come up and you get into thorny cost studies and years of litigation and lots of debates and economists make lots of money out of that, you know. That, luckily, is not a road that we're traveling down. Uh, and and I think that so I think that South Africa so I think that the process that's currently being followed um, can succeed. Thank you, Ryan. Councillor, I'll just add that um, you'll probably find a footnote uh, on the paper as well that says um, the paper is written in his personal capacity for everything else that we disagree with. Uh, one question for for for, for you: um, What are your plans in terms of fibre to the home? Um, they, it, it's again based on um, business cases that we do. Right now, our focus has been um, rolling out fiber to connect the major economic hubs, and within each economic hub, uh, focus on driving fiber to um, within the metro area. Um, the the amount of investments that's required to roll out fiber to the home is 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 quite quite a, a fair amount. Um, and we will continue to assess based on business case, but our priority has been at least making a ubiquitous fiber infrastructure that's available that connects the cities that are um, in, in route between the major economic hubs, and thereof continue to build. Um, our 6,700 kilometers that we have right now, and continuing to grow as we build our national long distance is where our current focus is, um, and we will continue to assess uh, the services as we can provide. And it, it leads into... Um, is, is fiber to the home um, the end nirvana point? Um, or is there a, a, mech, a, a point in between that one can provide uh, leveraging existing infrastructure? And our view has always been where there's inf existing infrastructure, leverage that if you can, because that's a wise way of investing capital um, and, and money into, into infrastructure that's well needed um, in the geography and therefore um, be cautious, but to be uh, wise in where we invest, and that's where we've chosen to invest, which is choosing to invest, which is more in in connecting the the broader cities uh, together at the first step. Do we have any questions from the public?
Neertel, you may have had a brief presentation, but I'm afraid we've abused you with lots of questions and now a whole lot more to come here. That was the intent. <laughs> from uh, the SAC, from Jacques Squipman. If you use access to buildings in terms of ducts, what about using riser cables and floor cables already existing? I'm not sure I understand this question. I think I can, I think I can tackle it. I'm okay. not, not entirely certain that it is uh, pertinent to the discussion, but it certainly deals with the issue of facilities. Mm. Um, and, and I think just for the record, uh, we make use of whatever facilities are available. Um, and certainly, you know, in terms of our uh, ECNS license, we, we have a right to enter upon premises and deliver services. But obviously, at the within the within the constraints of the, of the landlord and the the owner of the of the of the property, we certainly um, uh, feel very strongly about having access to the facilities within the premises, uh, which would include duct, ducts and risers and so on. Frankly, our experience has been, quite often, that uh, at the time that we arrive at a building, the ducts are already full. And often the landlord says, well, you can't use the duct because there's another guy in it. From the CWU, uh, is, the, is there any research on unused copper if, the, if there is any broadband demand? We're not we're not uh, aware of any research on uh, copper in South Africa, and I mean what we can say is that um, you know there there were five and a half million lines copper lines in a, in around 2001. That's from Telcom's annual report, 2000 2001, um, and currently today they're about four million in use. It suggests that there's a lot out there that can still be used. I don't know if that helps. I don't know if that. Uh, the The ratio. This is a question around how many employees, per, how many lines per employee do you have, or how many customers per employee? Connections, yeah, customer connections per employee. Um, I'm not sure what that question was, um, but if it says how many customers do we have, as Neotel? Yeah, the customer employee ratio. Talcom. Talcom. Uh, uh, um, for example, of the mobile, the mobile operators have a figure of around about, uh, I forget, it's two or three hundred um, customers per, per employee, whereas Telcom has a figure of 93. Oh, yeah, okay. So I can, I can give you the statistics, right? In, in the context of, uh, in the consumer business, mm. um, as at the end of March, uh, this fiscal, uh, we had about 53, 52,000 subscribers. Mm on a staff strength of almost 1,000 will give you a ratio of 1 is to 55. Uh, so one employee to 55. But we also serve businesses. And we have roughly about 1,300 businesses, uh, enterprise customers, that is, that we serve as well. They have a lot more consumers within that. So it becomes hard to give an absolute measure. But I hope this gives some kind of a framework of, of our uh, lines to employee ratio. Thank you. I mean, it's, it's also, it's uh, um a measure of my understanding in the um, monopoly kind of fixed line incumbent environment would be a measure of efficiency um, and I'm not sure that uh, companies really follow those uh, same kinds of measures as we turn more onto ARPUs and other indicators. Yeah, I can just d just add to that that the uh, one of the measures that we use uh, when benchmarking against uh, global players and this is both for challenges and incumbents um, is is rather a revenue ploy employee measure um, and, and that's the kind of number which we believe is, is more a measure of economic productivity uh, and, and contribution. Um, the sheer number of lines is going to differ depending on the player. I mean, obviously, a player with many, many millions of lines who's delivering a pure consumer service or larger consumer service will be very different from a company that's delivering predominantly enterprise services. Um, from the SACU. You state that you have five and a half million copper lines. Where are they? I think that's a misunderstanding. You stated that Telcom have, have five and a half thousand. And the second question is, where will your funding come from if LLU is implemented? Um, in, in our um, annual operating plan, um, every year we set aside a certain amount of funds for infrastructure build-out, as we have this year as well. So as LLU becomes um, pervasive and available, we will certainly set aside across our funding plan um, the necessary capex for us to start leveraging that capability when it's presented. Okay. Thank you. 
um, from SSCU. Do you have proposals for the fixed line deficit and how will you contribute? I think you've addressed that. Yeah, I mean, it's in our present. We've spoken yeah. at length about that. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Do you intend in the near future to exit SA looking at their last financial statement? Their auditors indicated that they are no longer a sustainable business. Um, we're here today. Okay. Um, <laughs> but what I'd, uh, and, that, and that's a very valid question, certainly in the top of mind of many. Um, Neotel was, was created um, as a mechanism to bring competition into South Africa. A significant amount of investment was required, and we've invested over 4 billion rand in infrastructure in the last few years of, of being, building our capability. Um, infrastructure, as is in other infrastructure businesses, does require investments up front and revenues to follow subsequently. So we're well aware that the telecommunications industry will have uh, a little longer lead time for starting to what would otherwise call as being EBITDA positive. But all I can say at this point is please watch the space and we're working hard to ensure that people see us and, and leverage our services. And we would invite uh, consumers as businesses to contact us because we'd love to serve them. We have a lot of innovative solutions that we think they can benefit from. And we're here to stay. Good stuff. <coughs> You're saying where you have fiber in metro areas, you won't require access to telecom local loop. Now, why are you looking for, uh, fiber, uh, for local loop access in Rosebank and Benmore Gardens? So we've got about 1,300 enterprise customers, roughly speaking, on fiber. I mean, you know, um, and the five and a half million copper lines. You know, do do the maths. It it doesn't even even though we've got lots of fibre running throughout Saint, and there are lots and lots and lots and lots of businesses that we could serve much more easily and quickly, um, and cheap and much more cheaply with with copper. Okay, thank you. Uh, can I just add there too? I mean, as as just for a quick one, um, even in the region that we operate, there isn't one road that connects Santon to Pretoria. You can get into that from many areas. Why would you do that? You do that provide options and choice available. And the reason why we're, pro we're a proponent of, of LLU is it will give options and choice for operators to provide services. Therefore, at, lo at the end, the beneficiary will be the consumer or the business. Okay, thank you. And finally, we've got a question from someone who's not from a union, from Eugenia, no, no last name from Vitz. Um, given that the LLU of copper is in high demand, have you considered how this development will show economics of scale and how such investment will impact on the variable costs i.e. maintenance and upgrading of this infrastructure? You want me to do that again? <laughs> given that the LLU of copper is in high demand, have you considered how this development will show economies of scale and how such investment will impact on the variable costs I maintenance and upgrading of this infrastructure. Um, it's, if we have, um, whether it's five and a half million lines or four million lines in ac action, and there's some that are potentially uh, there but not utilized, um, LLU will enable us and we will pay the, the fair price that enables us to provide service on it, that cost itself should provide the, the ability to continue maintenance on that infrastructure. Of course, detailed costing mo models have to be arrived at to get to what is fair and reasonable for an infrastructure that's laid and what's the incremental cost for maintaining that copper um, and ensuring that it's, all, it's provided for. Um, we believe that the revenue streams that will get generated by operators like us as we, we pay for those services should look at uh, going into the investments for uh, the O&M of that infrastructure itself. Which fairly obviously what that means is on a per unit basis, if there's more usage, there will be lower costs per unit. Yeah. Okay. Any, any last comments, Nito? Um, we'd like to thank ICASA, the councillors, um, our colleagues from the industry and the media uh, for, for the time today and certainly for the questions that we received. Um, we, we are very uh, eager and keen to work with ICASA on this initiative as we, we do believe that there is a lot of merit and benefit that will accrue from uh, LLU uh, and local loop unbundling of, of copper and therefore enable not just us but other operators in South Africa to leverage investments already made. 
uh, we, we will continue to work with uh, ICASA on this process. And if there's any queries from here on in that we're, we're happy to answer um, out, outside of this forum, but uh, within the framework of the policy that's, and the approach that's defined by ICASA. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Neotel, for your presentation, for your patience in answering all our many questions.